So Dirt Bristol has finally been put in the books. Of course, it has been a controversial race. When has this race not been in the last two years? I'm going to let you know right now that my voice is completely shot. I was at Dirt Bristol. I'm recording this from Bristol, so bear with me. I apologize. My voice should be better through the week. But I'll say this right now. I personally did like this race. I've been a big supporter of Dirt Bristol. Take of that what you will. But... I will say also from that that, well, there are some things that need to be talked about and there's some critiques that need to be made no matter how much you support this race being done on dirt. So we're going to go over four major things with it and then kind of talk about the future of NASCAR on dirt, especially with the Cup Series. As it's been a contentious issue for drivers, fans, media, everyone has an opinion on this kind of racing. So first, you got to talk about the rain. Yes, this is something that NASCAR can't control, but I think with scheduling, this can be mitigated a bit. This has been a problem with the Bristol Spring Race for the last decade. There has been plenty of rain, and it is part of the compounding reason for why we have dirt at the moment on this racetrack instead of running it on the concrete it's been run at for decades on. So I get that people will be like, hey, you can't blame NASCAR for that, but I think that if SMI and NASCAR can work together and figure out a better place to put this race on the schedule, maybe put it later in the spring, maybe put it early in the summer, I think that that could work better. But that's something that is neither here nor there. I think it's something that's going to make people hate this race a little more if they don't like it already. I think it's going to maybe put some people on the other side if they were maybe on the fence of not liking it. I think it's going to be something that really just does not help with this race. The last two years have been completely and utterly destroyed by rain in one way or another. And unfortunately, I don't see that changing anytime soon as, well, let's be real. Eastern Tennessee in April and May is going to be rainy. Another one is procedural issues. I'm sorry, NASCAR ran that race horribly. It seemed like a lot of fans, at least, were not clear on the procedures and rules for Bristol dirt. There was the red flag, for instance, where everybody pitted and we thought, well, Kyle Busch stayed out, so he might get the win if it ended up getting rained out in that moment. But then at the same time, at least at the track, they had Chase Briscoe as the leader. And that was something very confusing for us as, well, we had been told over the intercom that Kyle Busch would cycle out as the leader, and if it rained, Kyle Busch would win. Ultimately, it sounded like on TV and the radio they explained it better, that because it hadn't went back under green or one to go, the field hadn't been reset based on the pitting. So, yes, NASCAR made the right call, but it was a convoluted rule that needs to be changed if they're going to be doing dirt long term in NASCAR, which is something that I do think they're going to do for a few reasons I'll give later in the video. The start of the race, you know, the track was wet and damp. We all knew it was like that. And of course, even though it was only the SHR cars, they got unfairly screwed, even if it was just out of track position and not laps due to the fact that NASCAR didn't prep the track correctly. You had plenty of dirt racing fans online who were saying that you have to have sort of a, a heat up race, some kind of race that's gonna heat up the track, some kind of race that's gonna pack down some of that dirt that would fly up into the grills so that you don't have these problems. I think this stems from being a series that doesn't normally run on dirt and probably not doing their homework correctly. You didn't have to do it with the cars themselves. You had plenty of different cars you could have done them with. Maybe you could have some leftover trucks so that at least you'd have a show out of it for people. Unfortunately, that marred the start of the race and really set the tone, in my opinion, for a lot of people online being pretty upset with the way that it went. But even with these things, I think that this race can succeed, or at least dirt racing in NASCAR can succeed. Once NASCAR got its head out of its butt, once the drivers got a footing of the track itself, and not just some heat races like they ran on Saturday, there was actually some really, really good racing. A lot of the restarts had four and five wide racing. There were a lot of people who were able, even though it was difficult to pass, were able to make their way through the pack. I think the only issue is the fact that really once the leader got the lead, it was incredibly difficult for the guy in second or third or fourth or whoever was making that run at him 
to get the lead away from him. I don't know if there were any green flag passes for lead. I know there might have been one or two. My memory is very foggy on it because it's right after the race itself. And as you can tell, not everything is up to par as usual with me. And so I might be wrong, but it seemed like there were very few passes for the lead cleanly under green flag. It seemed like you could get beside the leader, but it was very difficult to get past the leader. And that's something that's happened before in dirt racing and NASCAR. Just look at the way that the trucks were at Eldora back in the day, or how the trucks were the night before on Bristol Dirt. But I think that this kind of racing can be tweaked enough that NASCAR doesn't need to have a bunch of them, but if they had one or two dirt races a year, I think that it would be okay. Now, I'll say this. I don't know if Bristol Dirt is the right way to go about it. You're not going to win any NASCAR fans over dirt by taking away one of their favorite tracks, even if it's kind of warranted. Now, there's some other options you can do. People have talked about bringing North Wilkesboro back as a dirt track. People have talked about trying it again and seeing if you can make it work at Knoxville. I don't think those are the two ways to go about it. I think NASCAR, SMI, ISC, all of them need to swallow their pride, say sorry to Tony Stewart, and race at Eldora. It seems like the best suited track for stock cars and trucks, so I think that that would be the best way of going about it. It's a popular track, it's a track that races well, and you wouldn't be doing dirt races at the expense of Bristol. Now, they did announce at the race itself that Food City had signed on for another five years through 2027, so I would not be surprised if the dirt race lasts maybe even that long. So don't be surprised if it doesn't go away. But again, I do think that working towards having a race at Eldora, a track that can support a cup crowd as well, is the way to go long term. If you want NASCAR fans to support dirt racing, which again, like I said, should probably be pretty good. And of course, we got to talk about the finish. The finish of this race, in my opinion, is quintessential NASCAR. You have the guy who's the underdog still in Tyler Reddick. You have a young gun who's a very popular younger driver too in Chase Briscoe. And with that, you have Briscoe running down Reddick. It was pretty clear with about 15 to go that Briscoe was starting to get into his own. He was getting comfortable on the track. He was really pushing up on that cushion and he was using it to make up time every single lap on Reddick. So when it came to two to go and he was right there, you knew that there was gonna be a great moment. You come to the white flag, he gets right up behind him, and as they go into three and four, he just tries to make a slide drop. He goes for it. He goes for the victory, something that Briscoe has not had the opportunity to do too much in the Cup Series. Reddick, of course, going for his first win, is not going to give an inch. The two of them get together, spin out. It seemed like Reddick, if he could get the car moving fast enough forward, was actually going to be on his way to a win, but in the end, it was Kyle Busch scoring his 60th career victory. So, that right there, in my opinion, is iconic. That is the kind of finish that you want to see. It actually reminds me a lot of the slide job finish between, well, himself and Kyle Larson in 2018. But, ultimately, Bush gets the 60th win, easily places himself ninth on the all-time win list, and Reddick once again comes up a bridesmaid, never seeming to be able to get that win. And it was a really, really good showing for a lot of fans like myself who stuck it out through two rain delays, through tons of rain all day, through just a bad experience generally when you look at how to experience a race. We at least got a good finish out of it. Overall, do I think Dirt Bristol is something that is in the long-term future of the sport? No. But do I at least enjoy this night and enjoy this for what it is? I do. And I think Dirt has a place in NASCAR. I would be very interested to hear what Kyle Busch has to say if it's still setting the sport back, seeing how he got a winning, well, backed into it. So that's where I'm going to leave it with you. After Dirt Bristol, now do you think Dirt has a place in NASCAR's future? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.